You're watching JNL Live, and this is the Rant Radio Show. This is our second episode, and this week's topic is the fiscal cliff. Now, if you turn on your TV at any point, at any day in the last month or two since the election, this is what you'll hear. The U.S. budget is heading for a fiscal cliff. If deals aren't reached in Congress by the end of the year, a combo of automatic tax hikes and budget cuts will plunge us into economic depression. And there is no escape! Or so they want you to think. So what do you really need to know about the fiscal cliff? And should you be battening down the hatches to find out how to survive the next impending apocalypse? Well, I'm going to break it down a little bit to you. And this segment will end on a positive note because basically most of you and I know that we have been heading in this direction for quite some time. So none of this really comes at a surprise. It's more just, once again, laughable that the media is latching on to this term and taking tactics of fear-mongering and uh, dramatization in order to make suckers out of all of us. But luckily, some of us are starting to wake up for that, and we're not going to take that lying down. So I'm going to start off a little bit with where this fiscal cliff term came from, so you guys can kind of wrap your heads around why all of this is happening now. So the term fiscal cliff started getting used by Ben Bernanke, who, as you may know, is the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Now, in February earlier this year, he started using this term to describe the, uh, the massive spending cuts and the tax increases that are supposed to go into effect uh, as of January 1st, 2013. So, if you wanted to make it more accurate, you might call the fiscal cliff a fiscal slope or a fiscal hill because the, the effects that we're going to see from this are, are more gradual. I don't see us all literally plunging into a 30s-like depression overnight. Um, however, the media wants you to think that so that, I don't know, you start taking some kind of reparations. I'm not really sure what they expect people to do. Uh, however, people like Bloomberg are already capitalizing on this kind of fear and drama and airing stories about a uh, business owner who fired his own son in anticipation of the fiscal cliff which isn't even gearing up to happen yet for another month. So just an idea of how this is impacting people mentally and psychologically in all aspects. So uh, why are these spending cuts happening now? In case you guys don't know, the Bush tax cuts, which were uh, extended for a year, they will expire at the end of the year. Um, so basically what these uh, tax cuts uh, expiring lead to is a whole other debate in Congress and with the current administration. Of course, you have the usual Republican rhetoric where they refuse to bargain with any kind of taxes for the rich. Uh, they think that the wealthy should not get a break. And now all of the programs that a lot of people in this country depend on, such as Medicare, food stamps, and Social Security, are being looped into the entitlement category. And, uh, you know, as Romney very well put it, that's the 47% of the nation that, uh, that just wants a handout. So, uh, yeah, good job, Republicans. You're bitter. I know you're bitter because Romney didn't win, but you got to stop acting like we're all a bunch of lazy bums because this is your mom, this is your dad that are retiring. These are your kids out of school who can't afford to pay their student loans. These are the people who have been laid off and ha are going on food stamps for the first time in their life. And I don't think they're that happy about it. But if it wasn't for those programs, you'd see droves of people in the streets digging through the garbage. And uh, right now, the food reclamation movement hasn't caught on that big yet. So um, what do lower taxes for the wealthy do? Because this is what the Republicans want, right? They think that uh, lowering taxes for the rich is not going to do anything good for the economy because the wealthy are the job creators. Yeah, we know how good that's gotten us. So, so what has lowering taxes for the wealthy done? Um, we now have crumbling infrastructure. We have overpriced and a mediocre health care system. We have record corporate profits, which that totally benefits you and me and um, every Joe Schmo on the street. 
And, um, oh, there are extreme measures being taken to pay workers even less. So it seems like all the movements that we've had in the last hundred years in order to establish fair working wages, fair working conditions, they're all slowly starting to get pushed uh, out of the way as these greedy corporations want to take in more and more profit. So one of the problems here is that uh, a lot of these corporations are taking this as an opportunity to act like they are with you and they are so interested in getting us back on track. So there are about 80 CEOs of some of the top corporations, which include GE and Boeing, some of the really heavy hitters in the global market. They have a campaign right now called Fix the Debt. So this is, uh, if you haven't seen these ads yet, they should start appearing very soon. They've been working diligently on coming up with these campaigns. Uh, it's basically a massive media and lobbying blitz, and it's designed to make you extremely fearful of this uh, economic doom that we are headed straight for, and, uh, and that they're with you, and they are going to work through this and, and come up with ways that, that we can get through this together, but that we're all going to have to make some sacrifices, as if uh, we weren't already doing that with the recession and the housing crisis from 2008. So uh, one of the uh, media outlets that I went to that's more of the um, low-key, uh, more fair uh, newscasters, there was a woman that was interviewed, and she, she compared this uh, fiscal cliff media uh, fear-mongering to the Trojan horse for tax breaks. So basically what she was arguing was that uh, this is a perfect opportunity for corporations to use the idea of helping to fix the debt just as another way for them to get a tax exemption. And uh, they're already fighting to keep their foreign earnings tax exempt. And that most of them already don't pay taxes, but this is just to ensure that the same push that they've been making for the last decade continues to go through while all of us are running around like headless chickens trying to figure out how to uh, cope with the possible depression. So, uh, you know, we're looking at a $134 billion loophole that corporations are looking to take in, um, basically capitalizing off of this disaster on top of disasters that has already hit the nation um, in the last few years. So, what can we do? There are a few things that we can do. Um, most people that you talk to will probably tell you resources have been completely misallocated, and that is the problem. It's not that we don't have money to fix this potential fiscal cliff. It's that we've been spending more than we've been able to pay back. We've basically been racking up the hugest credit card that you can imagine, and we're just expecting the Fed to print us more money. So. What could we do? I don't know, tax financial transactions. We have the Robin Hood tax, which has been on the table for over a year now. What else can we do? Energy reform. Why don't we start making all of these big oil companies switch over to good, clean energy and stop feeding us all that bull crap that clean coal is clean and that natural gas is good for us when it's not? We're destroying the earth and everybody knows it. Oh, what is the Robin Hood tax? That's a very good question. So the Robin Hood tax, which was a, a, big, uh, a big plan that was advocated originally by the National Nurses United and now ACT UP is also backing, is a very small tax that would be placed on all the financial transactions that go on on Wall Street. So all of these stocks that get traded thousands and thousands of times a day, it's 0.01% of, 0.001%, excuse me, got to make sure we get those zeros right. Um, so this is a pretty small number we're talking about. We're talking about pennies on transactions, but what this does is it generates billions of dollars that doesn't affect you and me, anybody who's got money riding in the stock market right now, not the shareholders. This is simply a tax that comes out of these transactions that go on all day long on Wall Street, and it would rack up to billions that could be allocated for health care, for funding AIDS, uh, and ending the AIDS epidemic. It could also go towards schools and education, providing free tuition to, to universities. This, this is a huge way that we could raise trillions of dollars. Also, how about we spend less on defense? 
What are we setting up military bases for? Are we preparing for World War III? Because we're not hearing that. All we're hearing is that we're in debt and that we keep raising the debt ceiling and that Obama wants to ask for even more money to cover these, these holes that we're landing in. Meanwhile, we're deploying troops still. We're setting up drones. And we have military bases all over the world. For what? So that we can stick our noses in other people's business and, and lose any respect with our allies? So that we continue to do nuclear testing in this country, even though we condemn countries that have any kind of nuclear capability whatsoever, and then fabricate nuclear capability in countries that don't have the means to do so? I'd say we're big, fat hypocrites. So this is where we're at. We're a bunch of money-grubbing bums that just want to live off the government and want to hand out. The Republicans want to put a stop to that. The rich are the wealthy job creators, and we need to spare them from this fiscal, fiscal cliff and take care of them, because they're what's keeping us going, really now. So let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, here's a really big thing that's been in the news. Social Security. Now, uh, what you guys may know about Social Security is that the money that has been being put into Social Security, the money that your parents and the parents before them and us as young workers in the workforce have been paying into Social Security in the event that when we retire, we have a cushion, we have something to live off of to enjoy our dying years. Now, the money that has been put into the Social Security Trust Fund is actually a tax fund. And what they do is they take that money and they spend it on other stuff. The money doesn't even exist. And when it comes to getting the Social Security out, we're borrowing from the Federal Reserve at an exorbitant rate, and that's why it's such, it's such a problem, because we are not using the Social Security Fund for what it's intended, for taking care of Social Security. The name says it all. So what are they doing? They, they basically want the 99% to pay taxes, they want the 1% to be able to gut taxes through bailouts, which we've seen in the banks, through subsidies, through rebuilding all of the private homes and beaches that have been damaged, for instance, during Hurricane Sandy. Have you guys seen any work on the public beaches? Have you guys seen any work on the public properties? You're not going to see it. What you're going to see first is you're going to see money pouring in to restore the rich communities, and it's already happened. Did Lower Manhattan suffer at all because of Sandy? No, there was plenty of relief for Lower Manhattan. You can't let the stock exchange go down for more than a day. But you go to areas like Staten Island, where Jack and I were not just this weekend. You go to the Rockaways. You go to parts of Jersey. It looks like the apocalypse already hit, and there's no sign of that changing anytime soon. So, again, pension funds fuel the stock market. Wall Streeters walk away scot-free. This is just another opportunity for the 1% and all of the corporations that control our government to capitalize off of a disastrous situation that could happen gradually over time and, and basically make us all willing to foot the bill because we're too scared to argue any different. So, let's see. I don't know if any of you guys have any questions. we got about six more minutes left on this rant. Um, you know, what it comes down to is the media does what it always does. It's always ready to sink its teeth into the next fear-mongering sensation. We, we are creating a contrived crisis situation. We are basically um, permitting the lifting of the debt ceiling, which is going to continue to lead us more and more into debt. We're not going to have the money that is needed to allocate towards these public service programs that we desperately depend on because the government doesn't want to shut down defense spending and actually spend it on what we need. And uh, this, was all ha this is all happening by design. This was, this was pre-planned to happen right after the election that, that they were going to start coming out with this kind of crisis situation because these tax cuts are expiring and Congress is always deadlocked and Obama's in a tough position because now he's forced to sit down with Boehner, the, the Speaker of the House, and put on a pouty face and try to figure out how to make everybody happy. And he can't make everybody happy because he can't, he can't control the puppet master. He's just the puppet. 
And all of Congress wants to stay deadlocked because they don't want to resolve what's going on. Because they're all making money off of it. So have no fear. When the new year comes in, if the Mayan calendar doesn't wipe us out, then we will all just watch a gradual decline, which has been the case for the last decade. So right now the Congress has pressure to, be, uh, to, to, to really resolve this because they're going to be more democratic. So the Republicans are pissed. There's going to be two extra votes in the Congress this coming year. And the desire to put into law long-term changes in Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, it's, it's the agenda of people who created the fiscal cliff. They want a way to get rid of these entitlement programs. They need to have a crisis scenario that will make you willing to let them go and to go without even less. So honestly, at this point, what can we do? We can all revolt, we can all stand up, and we can demand that they don't cut these programs, but after standing with seven individuals that were ready to get naked in Boehner's office to prove a point that AIDS is killing people and the naked truth is that these budget cuts are going to affect millions, I don't know. Boehner didn't even know why they are there. These guys are seriously out of touch. So I say if there's going to be any battening down of the hatches, it's going to be get some food, buy some land, start learning how to live on your own because this government ain't doing it for any of us. So. That's my rant. The fiscal cliff is a fabrication of the little guys up top who like to pull the strings and like to make things go up and down. This is all the money masters, baby. And if you guys don't know who the money masters are, you guys can watch a very good documentary called The Money Masters. And it's hours long. And it's on YouTube, so you can find it. It's in clips, and it was made quite a while ago. Uh, but it predicted everything that's coming to pass, and it'll give you guys a little bit more of a perspective with all the lengthy jargon that I'm not even that well versed in yet. But that's what the fiscal cliff is. I'm not going to keep watching the news every time they talk about it. I'm going to turn that off because I know what they're trying to do to me. They're trying to brain me, wash me into thinking I can let go of food stamps and go quietly into the night and die like a homeless bum and... I'm not into that. So, guys, that's my rant. We're j &L Live. I'm Lauren, and thank you guys so much for watching. And um, I haven't picked the topic for next week, but inspired by what I've seen in Hurricane Sandy, I may have to attack FEMA. I need to address these government organizations, Red Cross, and what the hell they've been doing with all this money that was supposed to go to Haiti and go to the Sandy Relief. So, guys, tune in next week, and definitely give us your feedback, how we can improve, and thank you so much for watching. Bye! So that was episode two, guys, of Rant Radio Live. We hope you liked it. Thank you so much for coming and watching. Um, if you go from episode one to episode two, you can see it got a little better. There was no scotch tape involved this time. Um, and uh, the camera didn't drop, so we're getting there, slowly. Um, we're working with a budget, a very small, almost non-existent budget, um, so we do what we can. Again, thank you for your support, Bath. Thank you for get, getting us on Global Rev. Um, Vlad and the whole Global Rev team, Treb, thank you so much. Um, Kat, Susie, um, Angie, Sherry, all of you, thank you so much for following us and coming out and supporting and watching us. Um, if you're not already, please follow us on Twitter. It's at J-A-K underscore N-L-A-U-R-E-N. That's at J-A-K underscore N-L-A-U-R-E-N. At Jack underscore N. Lauren. And if you can make a contribution to our WePay, we greatly appreciate it. Um, anything helps, even if it's a penny. Um, we put it towards traveling expenses. We're trying to get back to Staten Island this weekend. Um, and hopefully within the next month head out to the tar sands and cover that for a little while so if you can it would be a big help it's wepay.com slash donations slash jnl underscore live underscore one and that is the number one thank you guys so much you have a good night um and yes look up the money masters it's on youtube it's a three and a half hour documentary it's kind of lengthy but it gives you the history the history of money itself back from like the 1200s um all the way to modern day, and um, for those of you who are familiar with the word they, um, for those of you who know who they actually are, that's what that documentary is about. It's about they and the people that really control the world and who really um, oppress people and put people in the position that we've all been put in. 
Um, so check that out. It's Money Masters on YouTube. You guys have a good night, and I believe the next time we will be going live is this weekend for Staten Island, and then Sunday night for the weekly Occupy Storefront meeting, um, and then Monday for the anti-austerity, anti anti-capitalist action, um, D17, I believe that is. Um, so definitely check it out. Um, and no, it's cat. It's it's not like inside job at all. It honestly, it blows inside job out of the water like seven times. Um, so definitely check that out. All right, thank you guys.